I'm David Stewart. I'm an engineering manager at Intel, uh, working in the Open Source Technology Center, working very hard to make our Intel Xeon processor being the best uh, choice if you choose Open Solaris or the Solaris operating system. So this is something that uh, I think is very exciting because uh, Solaris has had this long reputation of being very stable and actually pretty technically advanced. And I was very surprised the more and more I, I've worked with Solaris how incredibly advanced it is as an operating system. And you know we're coming up with some very advanced uh, hardware technologies too. And the fact that it's open source really is tremendous because we can really uh, very much collaborate with a community, do it all in the open, really make it clear what it is that um, you know people can do to take advantage of this technology. Now, Intel, as we kind of go through our, our TikTok sort of process of you know, constantly pushing forward the envelope in terms of microarchitecture and in terms of process technology, um, we're kind of going through that um, transition today as we kind of look forward to the future to our next generation called the uh, core microarchitecture, the new core i7 microarchitecture. This is something we've been calling the Nehalem uh, code name. Uh, and so a lot of people still refer to it as that, but you know, it's got an official name, so I want to try and use that. I want to show you a few things that are specific to what we've done with, with Open Solaris and Solaris to really make it sing on that, uh, that Nehalem processor. Again, we've already, you know, kind of talked about this uh, uh, processor and uh, said, you know, this is something which is a highly scalable architecture from two up to eight cores and you know this is showing four processor cores within the same chip with a large shared uh, L3 cache um, and this is uh, has an integrated memory controller so we've got memory chips that plug you know essentially are connected directly to the don't plug into the rather they're directly connected to the processor and so clearly we have a very interesting architecture this is an example of a, a two socket system so we'd have two of our processors here um, with memory connected etc and so what's interesting from an open Solaris standpoint is uh, we're actually doing several interesting things. One of them is the threads that get scheduled by the operating system, right, if they're doing things kind of naively, um, they won't really take advantage of this architecture very well. Well, it turns out the dispatcher is already pretty uh, well uh, designed to adapt to different architectures. And so, um, you know, really just describing this to the dispatcher in Solaris where it's able to really schedule things very well in this architecture. Also in terms of these integrated memory controllers, this is really makes this a non-uniform memory architecture or NUMA system. And uh, Solaris you know, already has a technology called memory placement optimization or MPO. So again, you know, by just describing this to the operating system, Open Solaris and Solaris are able to take nice advantage of this, of this architecture. So this is really cool. And now in terms of power, I've already kind of talked about turbo mode, which is a new uh, feature in this processor. Very interesting and uh, one that the operating system can take advantage of. But more importantly, there are other advances in terms of, you know, uh, really using the least power possible when you're not doing something, but having the most power available to you when you're really busy and you need to get stuff done. And there's a project called under the OpenSolaris.org uh, overall project. There's a project called Tesla that we in the community are very involved with to optimize this power area. Um, then virtualization is a big advance in terms of this processor as well. So, you know, we'll know a lot of people are, are using uh, consolidation, using various uh, products, uh, and, uh, you know, there's, there's even the open source uh, XVM server product that's, that really uh, is trying to take advantage of virtualization. Well, we've added a lot of features, uh, made the entry and exit into guests a lot faster in this processor, and we've added a lot, new, a lot of uh, reasons um, why you can virtualize things so you don't have to exit the guest. So a lot of advances here. And then finally, uh, the new instructions and uh, counters that are in this so that you can really, if you want to boost the processing performance of your application on this processor such that you, know, you detect it, that processor is there, why you can use these new uh, XML instructions and uh, really take advantage of that in the processor as well. And uh, we've got all that support basically in libcpc, which is where the counters are defined, new instruction support basically in the, the whole tool chain that's in Open Solaris. And, uh, you know, so how can you, you get advantage of this? How can you take advantage of this? Well, what's really interesting about this is that, you know, in the new Open Solaris uh, 2008.11 um, that's something that you will really be able to use, uh, you know, when that gets released, uh, to be able to, to see the source code and have a, 
you know, finished complete distribution that will support these processors. And uh, that's very exciting. And not only will support them, but will be optimized for them. Uh, you know, we'll also have the Solaris 10 update um, that is uh, coming out the fall of 2008 that also uh, is optimized for this processor as well with some of these technologies. So that's pretty cool stuff. You can actually, you know, get the bits uh, and uh, make use of them, play with them. The processor comes out, um, take advantage of them. And so uh, this is really uh, great stuff. We'd love for you to participate with us, not only trying out the bits, but also getting involved in the source code. In the uh, opensolaris.org uh, site, there's an Intel platform project that you can join and really uh, join with us in the open source community to really uh, make these technologies really play together well.